Hi and welcome to this uh, YouTube video um, and I shall be going through the, um, the addition of two Foscom um, model F18918W cameras uh, to my existing network. As you can see I've got some Apple Macintoshes um, with uh, an iPad, a couple of iPhones and, and, and Windows applications as well. But before I do, I thought I'd just take you through my network so you can see what we're dealing with here. So I'm in the UK, so we have BT, it's my ISP, um, providing my broadband. On the end of it, I've got a Dell router, uh, but I'm not doing wireless on the router itself. I'm doing wireless via an airport extreme box, um, because I've got quite a few wireless applications and um, a separate box to do wireless and a separate box to do broadband is uh, uh, by far, if you haven't tried it, it's a lot quicker. So on the back of it, it's got four ports. One of the ports is taken up with the Dell router. Um, another one has got my Mac on the end of it. Another one has got my Windows laptop for work on the end of it. And I've got another one connected to my Blu-ray player in my front room via the mains cable of the Earth cable in my house, which is an interesting proposition. Um, I've also got a wireless printer for everybody in house to use, and you'll see the wireless elements next. And I'm just going to put a camera in here. Now, from a wireless point of view, um, we've got a MacBook Pro, we've got a couple of iPhones, we've got an iPad, we have got a netbook, we've got three iPods, another um, laptop upstairs where there's no wireless, uh, wire, no network with the data. We have three airport expresses providing me with um, AirTunes and um, two Windows or Windows PCs, but they have got Windows 7 on. Um, I've also got um, in my front room here, uh, obviously telly, which is not on here, but um, my Wii, my PS3, my Apple TV, and that's where I was going to put another camera. Okay, so there we go, that's what we have. So I'm just going to show you the Word document again, and this will then take us through the settings of these cameras. Now, um, I should be talking about software, I should be talking about manuals. Now, um, the software and the manuals are on the CD inside the camera box so you won't be changing from any of the information that's on those okay so first thing we need to do um, before I even plug in these cameras um, I did a couple of things to my router first before I started um, the first thing I need to do um, non-router was go on the internet and correct myself I had something called a DYN DNS account um, this is needed in order to provide you with a name so you type that into your browser and that will take you to your ISP IP address for my house. Um, so that was the first thing I needed. The same thing I then need to do was talk to my router itself and change the DHCP scope of it to allow me to have some spare applications left or spare addresses left or fixed IP addresses. That's obviously a need for the cameras. So I go up to 100. So camera one, camera two, guess what? 101, 102. And now, also we need some ports assigned as well, some port mapping for these cameras to use as well. So if you think about um, an 0800 number, and that goes to a local telephony number, which appears at your house. And then within your house, you have the extension numbers for your cameras. Think of these as extension numbers. Now, um, mo uh, most of these come, or most applications, not alone, not alone just cameras, have a port address of something which is normally 80 at the end. Um, most IP ISPs block that just to be user friendly. So, what we do is we, we then have to change that. So, I've left the 80, uh, so all I've done is put an 81 at the end or an 82 at the end. So, you can see down the bottom here, there's camera 1, camera 2, IP address, followed by the port numbers. Um, Protocols used, so I just have both of those, TCP, UDP, uh, and away you go. Now, remember the DUI DNS account you set up? You'll need to then tell the router all about that. So you do that, and there's a DNS setting just about in every single router, there's got to be one. Um, and then you find out, put your DNS account details in that you've got. Now, you also need to tell the camera software and test it. Uh, as well. Now, we haven't actually plugged the camera software in yet, but um, this is something you will need to do. But we'll do this at point seven 
Um, and as you can see, we, we haven't got many many points to go through anyway. Okay, so the first thing we do is we unplug our cameras, get them out of the box, unplug them, plug them in. Um, so we, first of all, we need power, and we need to uh, put the air roll on the back, so we're going to do wireless, but not yet. And then we'll plug an Ethernet cable in, and then we can plug that into one of the spare ports on the back of your router or Airport Express in my case. The, the DHCP within the, the router or the Airport Express, um, no, the router in my case, would, would then give me an IP address for that camera so I can connect to it and watch video and all that stuff via a fixed a DHCP IP address. I would need to then change that IP address to be wireless. So this is how I do that. If you look at version 6 on here, I use the IP camera tool, which is a bit software, which is inside the box, as I say. Um, you, you then connect to the switch. Your router, change that to a static IP address. Set the correct port, which you've done above. Reboot, remove the cable whilst it's rebooting. Then it plugs back in. And it then connects in a wireless mode. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then you can watch live video in a wireless mode and then repeat the process for the other camera. And not forgetting, because you're at point 0.7 now, to go back and run that DDNS test after I put all the details in. Okay, so there's a couple of differences in terms of the browser that you use in order to get to the cameras. Um, you have something called um, ActiveX under the Internet Explorer of the Windows environment, um, which allows you to use the top log on instead of the bottom one, which then allows you to have two additional features, or no, probably three actually. One of them is this multiple camera view, which is quite useful actually. So it will show you the different cameras and uh, what state they're in. You can also select option, you know, show me one picture, or show me four cameras, or show me nine cameras. You also have the ability to record and talk to the cameras. So you can talk via the microphone on your PC and then the audio comes out of the camera and vice versa. Um, now that particular bit I wasn't all that bothered about, but I did like the bit about the additional cameras, being able to view each one. So let me have a look at what that actually looks like in terms of the browsers and how you log on. Here they are side by side. Internet Explorer on the left and Safari or Firefox or anything on the right hand side. So what you can see, there's your multiple device settings which you have the options of, um, IE and also back as well which is quite a useful tool so you can actually select back after I've made my settings, go back to the cameras and view them. Um, otherwise you'll have to log off and log back on again. Should have great shakes to be honest. But this is what I did want to do most of all, is basically set up a trigger that if anybody walked past the camera or set the movement off, then it, the camera would take half a dozen pictures and email it to me. Um, so th this is entirely possible, but camera software uses an old SMTP protocol only. It does um, from this from an outbound, outbound, outbound point of view. Now, um, in the UK, I found that there was only one supplier <laughs> that offered that type of service, um, and that was this particular, this GMAX uh, account that did it. Now, what it also allowed me to do, once I did that and tested it, it then allowed me to put in three other email addresses uh, of my choice, which I did find very interesting. So here we go. Um, Obviously you need to test it before you can add all these. This is an application test within the camera software itself. Then once tested, you will then be able to add three other accounts. But this is what it looks like. So you can see that I've got two test emails here. One from both my cameras, the front room and the conservatory. And this one's got six pictures on it. And then below, the two settings that I have used within the camera itself, um, software itself. So this is the triggering settings um, and what it does, send an email, upload them and so on. And then here are the email settings themselves, um, which was used. I suppose particular attention should be paid to this port address, 
as well. Most um, most ISPs um, block port 25, which is um, what's used uh, for most email clients. Okay, so that's that. Um, from another point of view, I've got um, uh, an, an iPad and an iPhone. Um, there are some good. There's a good viewing tool um, which is on the App Store called Foscan Control. Um, it's not for. It's not a free app. You have to pay for it, but it's not. It's only a couple of thirty quid, um, and that then delivers on the iPad multiple multiple devices, and they come back again. So I'll just show you a picture of those. So this is in in um, I can't remember what it's called. Portrait mode? No, landscape. Portrait mode. Yeah, so it's showing two cameras in landscape mode. It actually shows four cameras, so it's split into four, which is good. And then a couple of notes um, from a, a LAN or Ethernet or wireless point of view. You need to. Oh, the key thing there is to put this number at the beginning. That's what it was. This bit at the beginning. It's HTTP colon four slash four slash whatever the IP address of the camera is, and then the port number that it's going to use. Also, you'll see that uh, oh, I've clicked on something else and trying to connect to my camera. <laughs> um, and then to search on the WAN, this is from the inset, it's from outside. You do the HTTP again, but this time you have your DNS account information followed by the same port numbers. Key thing there is to note is this will not work on your WAN. So don't test it on your LAN, you need to then test it with GSM phone instead or, or some form of GSM phone. And then um, that's a couple of a couple of gotchas that um, I did get along the way for using browsers for the first time. I'll ask you to put the password in again. This is the password of the cameras. Now in default it's called admin, so that's what you put in. There's no password. Same thing as well when you get to the camera side. But and that's it. Hey presto, and uh, you're online. Well, you're all being used. Take care. Have a good. One.